Man, come on. Go ahead. Give the Lord another cheer. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Give somebody, two or three people, a great high five, would you, as you're being seated tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. It's good to see you tonight. Hallelujah. Mm-mm. Try and look at somebody and say, I don't know if it's just the lighting in here, but you just seem to get better looking all the time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. If you've got a Bible, would you open with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 12. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 12, and I know I just invited you to sit down, but may I invite you to stand up real quick, and we'll just read one verse, just one verse, but it, we'd like to begin by just honoring the word of the Lord, by standing for the reading. We're going to read some more in a moment that we won't stand for, but this is just something we'd like to do, and so would you read with me 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12, you are not restricted by us but you are restricted by your own affections let me read it again paul writing to the church at corinth paul says by the holy spirit you are not restricted by us but you are restricted by your own affections by your own affections. You may be seated tonight. Feelings are both beautiful and terrifying. Feelings are both freedom and bondage. Look at somebody and say, feelings. Some of you are too young for that. That's from my childhood. Nothing more than feelings. Mm-hmm. Brazilian wrote that song, and it became a hit. But to live, listen, to live with no feeling isn't freedom. It's the worst kind of bondage. But to live controlled by feelings is a roller coaster that never ends. And that's a bad kind of bondage. How many know the beauty of roller coasters is they only last 90 seconds? I didn't get any. Yeah, come on. How much you think about it? The beauty, the beauty of that roller coaster is it's short. Hallelujah. You, you say, I love to ride a roller coaster. You get on that thing for 19 minutes. Hallelujah. You're not going to be so thrilled about riding that roller coaster. The beauty of the thing is it only lasts for a few short seconds. To live your life with no feeling is bondage of the highest kind. To live your life controlled by feelings is a roller coaster ride that never ends. And it's torment. And it's painful. And it'll cause you to be tormenting toward others. God created us to be emotional beings. We're looking these Wednesday nights at being freed from emotional bondage. Being freed from emotional bondage doesn't mean becoming unemotional people. Because the re here's the reality. The reality is there are, there are no unemotional people. Maybe Spock from Star Trek. But he wasn't an earthling, right? So if you're an earthling, you, you are never void of emotion. Sometimes you're void of feelings. There's a numbness that settles in. And yet even that numbness is really emotion. And so God made us emotional beings. The thing is, God's called us to be like him. And that means that our emotions are to be properly balanced. There's a check for our emotions. And we need to learn how to walk in the proper balance. Emotions are, uh, they make great, they're a great part of who we are. But let me just say it this way. Your emo the emotional part of your being is a horrible master. And if you're going to live controlled by your emotions, 
you're going to live a life that is up and down, in and out, victory this moment, no victory this next moment. And it's going to be, it's going to be just that constant roller coaster ride. And I've been in church all my life. Thank God I got saved. Somebody say amen. amen. But I've seen so many Christians, they, they just up and down, up and down, up and down, in and out, up and down, up and down. And God doesn't want us to live that way. God wants us to be a people who are healed in the emotional part of our being and we're healed in the rational part of our being. We are left brain, right brain, and there's a balance that comes with it. Somebody, somebody say amen. amen. We want to be in balance. Look at somebody and say we want to be in balance, not out of balance. Jesus, the Bible said, came full of grace and truth. There's balance. He came full of logic and love. And he's our role model. And so in the life of Jesus, you see moments of great emotion. But his emotion was always controlled. Ah. The Bible said that Moses was the meekest man that lived on the earth. Do you know what meek means? Meekness. You see, we think meek means a a person who's quiet, demure, uh, uh, you know, a floor mat, a doormat. You can walk over them easily. No, we think meek equals weak. But meekness literally means strength under control. I'm going to say that again. To be meek is to have strength under control. Jesus in Matthew 11, he invites us to come and take his yoke. He said, come, take my yoke upon you, for I am meek and lowly of heart. So Jesus was meek. He said it about himself. He said, I am meek. He wasn't saying I am weak. He's saying I have great strength, but my strength is under control. That's the balance, full of grace and full of truth. A few years ago, I was invited to bless. It was, it was a great blessing to me. In fact, it's an amazing story. I, I, needed, a, 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 I needed to get away to pray, and we had, someone had, had, uh, had made available in the past a cabin up in the mountains, and, and that cabin was no longer available to us. And, and so I was just praying right here on a Sunday morning. I just pray and say, Lord, I, I feel like I need to get away to pray. I need to just go to a cabin for a few days and spend some time with you. Lord, I don't know anybody that's got a cabin that I could, could, could ask about that. And I just said, Lord, let's just desire my heart. That prayer just rose up, Brother Mike, right here on a Sunday morning. And we just went through the service. And after the, after the service, I shook hands with a brother. A couple that had been coming to church for a while, but I didn't really know them. And I shook hands with them, and, and, and we spoke for just a second. And then they went on outside. And a few moments later, he turns around and comes back and says, Pastor Keith, excuse me just a second. I said, yes, sir. He said, uh, he said, we've got some cabins. I said, oh. He said, we've got some cabins, and we're, I'm, I'm finishing building one. And before we open it up for a rental market, I was just wondering, would you come and stay in it and pray in it and bless it? I said, I mean, I wish every one of my prayers would get answered that quick. Hallelujah. And I, I wasn't even really praying it. I just saying, Lord, I'd like to have. And, and so, and so we, the, the time came. They finished it. I went up there to pray. It was great. Margie and Isabella went with me for a couple of days. And then they're, they're, I had a whole week. And so they went for a couple of days. And then I had three or four days that I just dedicated to, to, to pray. So the first night that Margie and Isabella are gone, now this is a big cabin. It's about, you know, 5,000 square feet. I mean, it's a, it's a big cabin, three levels, and it's just a huge cabin. Uh, so, so now uh, the first night that I'm all alone in the cabin, I'm in the bed, I am asleep, and sometime right around midnight, the fire alarm goes off. Smoke detector, everything. Beep, beep. So I, 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 it woke me up. I, I, I sat up in the bed, 
I'm startled and I'm fearful. Now you say, you shouldn't have been fearful. Well, you, it's, it's a fire alarm, buddy. You know, I was asleep and now boom, the fire alarm. I'm the only person in the place. Beep, 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 beep. So I got up and I went through that. I didn't see any, smell any fire. I didn't smell any smoke. I didn't. So I get up and I, and I, walk, I, had to, I walked all the way through this cavern, this cavern. Palm sweaty, just looking, you know, feeling walls, smelling, trying to see what's going on. And it was a false alarm. When I walked through the whole house, I realized that only, only the smoke detector in the room I was sleeping in went off. But it was echoing through the house. It sounded, but only that one smoke detector went off. Holly, you say, why'd that happen? Well, I, I don't know exactly why. Maybe it's just the fire of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. But anyway, hallelujah. It woke me up. And, and I, 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 I thought when it woke me up and I'm beep, 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 beep. And I, I, I think, you know, you know what you think. Do I need to call 911? Way up here on the mountain. Do I need to call 911? And then, well, I, I better call the owner. Better call my brother. It's after midnight. It's a good thing I walked through the house and didn't impulsively start making phone calls because it was a false alarm. Come on, are, are you hearing me? The, the, emotion, the emotion wasn't bad, right? The, the emotion was a natural reaction to being awakened by that kind of alarm. But with our emotion, we've got to learn to put some reasoning. We want to be free from the impulsivity of emotion. Had I just been impulsive, I'd immediately awaken. Beep, beep, beep. I'd have started calling. I'd have called the brother whose cabin it was and awakened them. I'd have called Margie and awakened her. And she would have called somebody else and awakened them. And we got a prayer chain going, well, you know, after midnight. And, and, then, and then, you know, I'm going to call 911. Hallelujah. You ever get so nervous you, you forget the number to 911? Uh, anyway, so... <laughs> I, but I didn't do that, thankfully, because had I done that, it would have been a waste of energy, a waste of time, a waste of emotion. Come on. Well, you can get that in that illustration, but what about that, what about that word somebody said to you? What about that statement somebody made? that you impulsively knew it was about you. Ah, yeah. And you immediately started talking. You didn't pause. You didn't do a little research. You didn't try to find out what was really going on. See, the smoke alarm was real. My feelings were real. But the alarm nor my immediate feelings were correct. Uh-oh. The alarm that night nor my feelings, my emotional reaction to that alarm, neither of those were correct indicators of what was really going on. I had to stay rational, look around to determine whether or not they were correct indicators. To what was happening. How many think it'd be good if we'd learn to apply that same kind of approach to every area of our life? Come on, I know it's gonna get a little rocky in here. Look over at somebody and say it's gonna get a little tough, maybe. Hallelujah. Come on, just look at him and love on him. Say it's gonna get a little tough for you, baby, but it's gonna be all right. Hallelujah. We're gonna come through this. How many wanna get free from emotional bondage? We're not going to be, look, we're not going to be free. I'm not talking about being free from emotion. Emotion is a glorious thing. I'm talking about being free from the bondage. That is emotion gone bad. That is emotion that's put in charge or in control of our life. Because too many people in the church, let me just talk about the church for a moment. Too many people live emotionally driven lives. And here's the thing, in the church, 
we many times cover it up by labeling it Holy Spirit. We label our feelings Holy Ghost. Well, the, well, the Holy Spirit moved on me. No, it wasn't the Holy Spirit. That was you, buddy. Well, the Spirit of God moved on me, and I, I, we have to do this right now. Got to do it right now. Well, nine times out of ten, that's not the Spirit moving you to be that urgent. That's your emotion that's moving you. I know I'm not going to get amens much. But that's usually just emotion. Look, we, we, have, we have exalted emotion in the church. I talk about my upbringing for a while because we, we've told people, you know, and we, we've sung and celebrated, thank God you don't have to do drugs to get high. Come to church and get high. And so church or getting together and praying and singing has become for many people an opiate. And, and, and they get a high off of it rather than learning how to live in the power of it. You see, the Holy Spirit, yeah, they're, they're feelings. And yes, when the Holy Spirit's moving, it's glorious and it's wonderful. And it is indeed out of this world. But how many understand that he didn't come to give you a high? He came to teach you how to live high. He came to teach you not how to live in an emotional, uh, euphoric moment of woo. He came to teach you how to live above all the challenges of the world, to live in victory despite the attack of hell. Hallelujah. He came that we might know the things that are freely given to us in God. I dare you to lift your hand and say, I want the Holy Spirit to be my teacher. Come on. Come on, more, more, hallelujah. I want the Holy Spirit to be my teacher, not my entertainer. Oh, hallelujah. He wants to teach you something, not just entertain you and make you feel good for a few moments. He wants to teach you how to live in victory. He wants to teach us how to overcome. He wants to teach us how to, how to live above feelings. In the mid-1990s, it's going a few years back, I was living on my own. I was in prayer in my living room, had my face in my hands. I was on my knees, my face in my hands, my head on the couch. And I was praying. And one of those moments like lightning, the Lord spoke to me. I didn't really expect him to speak to me. I wouldn't have asked him to tell me what he told me. But he spoke to me like a lightning bolt. And when God speaks to you in that manner, you don't have to write it in a journal because he writes it on your heart. And he spoke these words to me. Son, you are bound by your emotions. You are bound by your emotions. I said out loud, I said, I am not. I said, no. hallelujah. I said, no, sir, I am not. I know that's stupid, but I'm just telling you like it happened. I said, no, sir, I am not bound by my emotions. And I said to the Lord, I am not like, and I listed some things. I'm not going to list it now because it might offend somebody. And I, but I listed some things, some people that I knew. I am not like this, 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 this. I had a checklist. I, I am not bound by my emotions. And the Lord said, <laughs> he's so patient with us. He said, son, you are bound by your emotions. I said, Lord, how, how am I bound by my emotions? And he said, your praise is mostly determined. Your praise of me is mostly determined by your circumstances. If things are going the way you want it to go, you're all in. But if you don't feel it, if things aren't working out the way you thought it ought to work out, if you didn't get the recognition you thought you should get, 
If you didn't get the opportunity you thought you should get, you're, you're not praising me. Uh-oh. And I've, I, I made a decision right then. I repented of that. I haven't been perfect in it, but I repented of that. And I said, Lord, I want to learn. I want to learn how to, how to worship you, not based on your, the prayers you answer for me. I want to learn how to worship you because of who you are. I want to learn how to worship you because how many believe Jesus Christ is? Hebrews 13, 9 says, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. How many believe he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? Then if he's the same, why don't you lift up your hand and say, then my praise for him should be the same. My, my worship for him. Hallelujah. And I know, I know there are moments when our worship is, feels better to us than other moments. Just we are human. We, I love the, the verse in Psalm 103. It says, God has considered our frame that it is but dust. Thank God. He knows that we're in a dusty old frame. So sometimes my worship for him feels better to me than it does to other times. I feel freer. I feel more of his glory. I feel more of his anointing. And I love it more. Anybody know what I'm talking about? But do but you know what I, I, I've come to realize? That if we were to see from heaven's perspective, if we were to see from heaven's perspective, Sean, I think we'd find out that God views our worship as being deeper and purer in those moments when we don't feel it, when we don't think it's great, when we don't feel the anointing, when we don't feel the glory, but yet we still have our hands lifted up and we open our mouth and we sing, I give glory to your name. I, I don't feel anything. I don't feel the victory. Things aren't going the way I want it to go, but I give glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody wave and say, I give glory to your name. Glory to your name. So Paul said, you are not, he spoke to the Corinthians, he said, you are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own feelings, your own affections. You're going to love this. The Greek word is your own intestines. It's the bowels. He said, you're restricted. You're restricted, all right, but it's not us that have put restrictions on you. It's you, and you're living by your feelings that has restricted your life. The word restricted means constrained, limited. How many want to learn to live without the limits that you put on you? Come on, we're, we're so concerned about the limits that, that leaders put on us. We're so concerned about the limits government puts on us. We're so concerned about the limits that, that, that the devil has put in our life. We're so concerned about all kinds of limits, but we need to get focused on the limits that we have created for ourselves. Because hmm. not every limit is bad, brothers. Not every restriction is bad. Because I enjoy a wonderful marriage, I am restricted from flirting with other women. Bless God, I don't like to live with restrictions. Well, good luck with that, buddy. I want to be married, but I don't want to live with restrictions. The devil is a liar. The devil's a liar and you're an idiot. Come on. Not all restrictions are bad. I'm thankful. I know we don't like the, the, there are too many laws. I'm thankful that there are speed limits. I'm thankful that there are traffic lights. I fuss about them sometimes when they restrict me and constrain me and limit me. I may be sitting there fussing about it. But if I step back and think logically, I'm thankful for it because had I gone through there the way I was going to go through there and somebody else is going through there the way he wants to go through there, could be trouble, right? Hallelujah. Listen, listen to this passage from the message. Can you throw it up? 
Tim, from 2 Corinthians, starting verse 11, 11 to 13. This passage, 2 Corinthians 6, beginning verse 11 to 13 from the message paraphrase. Dear, dear Corinthians, I can't tell you how much I long for you to enter this wide open, spacious life. We didn't fence you in. The smallness you feel comes from within you. Your lives aren't small, but you're living them in a small way. Wow. I'm speaking as plainly as I can and with great affection. Open up your lives, live openly and expansively. Isn't that powerful? Your lives aren't small, but you're living them in a small way. He said, we didn't fence you in. We didn't do this. See, we always want to blame somebody. We want to blame leaders. You want to blame government. We want to blame churches. We want to blame corporations, businesses. We, we want to blame our spouses. We want to blame our children. We want to blame our parents. We want to blame the devil. We always want to blame somebody. But the key to your being free from bondage of any kind is owning your part in being bound. Uh -oh. If you want to be free, you got to own it. And Paul says to the church at Corinth, he said, you're, you're complaining that you've been fenced in. But he said, the smallness you feel is coming from inside you. It's not what's happening. Now. Can I just tell you something? If you learn to live open and expansively from the inside of you, huh, you won't be fenced in by the devil. Mm. If you learn to live openly and expansively before God from the inside out, limitations that should not be in your life are going to be broken by the truth and the power of God that's flowing out of you. Can I get a witness tonight? Amen. Look with me at Luke 15. Will you look, look with me at Luke 15? There's a very, am I doing all right tonight? Are you getting something? I know we're plowing a little bit, but God wants us to be free, to be free. And to be free begins with me owning my part in the bondage. I've got to stop living as if it's everybody else. Stop living as if, if, if they didn't do this, if they hadn't said this, if, they, if there wasn't this law, if there wasn't this restriction, if there wasn't this, there wasn't that. No, no, I just got to rise up and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be big. I'm going to let God do something big inside me. And God's grace and God's spirit will break me through what the enemy's trying to do outside of me. Hallelujah. And how many know that if you're living big, even small people around you can't keep you down long? Amen. Glory to God. I'll never forget a story. Dr. Jack Hayford is one of my heroes. And Dr. Jack was pastoring a small Pentecostal church in Los Angeles, California, a suburb called Van Nuys, California. And he had a small congregation. It started with just a handful, grew up to about 70, and, and then God just kept growing. Eventually, it grew to 14,000 in that one congregation. But here's, here's a story he told. His little church, little bitty building, they were struggling. It was just down the road might say sort of like we are just down the road from the First Baptist Church. And the First Baptist Church was thousands of people in a huge campus. And he said one day he was at a light on his way to his office and he's sitting at a light and the Lord spoke to him and said, do you realize this about yourself? <laughs> he said, What? Do you realize that you can't even look over at the First Baptist Church? He said, really? And then he said he realized that every time he'd drive by there, he wouldn't even look at it. 
They had the big church. They had big, a lot of people. They had all this. He wouldn't even look at them. And the Lord said, I can never do anything big with you until you get free from the smallness in your heart. And, and that smallness in his heart, it wasn't the fault of the first Baptist. It wasn't the fault of the pastor there. It was, come on, are you hearing me? It was just what was going on inside Dr. Jack. And so he prayed right there, and he asked the Lord to forgive him. And then from that day forward, he'd go by there, stretch his hand out, and he'd just bless the First Baptist Church. He'd just pray for revival, pray for prosperity, pray for good things, pray for blessing. And guess what? God began to multiply the, the church on the way that he pastored. The, the little four-square church began to grow, began to multiply. And then guess what? Eventually, the First Baptist, they built a new campus somewhere else. And guess who moved, purchased and moved in and, and included that big campus they had there? Hallelujah. So then Dr. Dr. Jack, that, that church on the way, they ended up having the whole two or three blocks right there that was part of what God, oh, come on, hallelujah. Will you lift your hand and say, Lord, I don't want to be small on the inside. I want to be big. Come on, hallelujah. Somebody say, Lord, Lord, help me to expand and help me to open up. Look with me at Luke chapter 15, beginning in verse 11. You know the story. I'm going to read it, and I'm going to make a couple observations, and we're going to pray. Then Jesus said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided, the father divided to the two sons his livelihood. Not many days afterwards, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. When he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. He would gladly, the young man would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods the swine ate. No one gave him anything. But, verse 17, will you read it with me aloud? But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? So he said, I will arise and go to my father. I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven. And before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned. Watch this. He owns it. I have sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you in your sight. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of, his, of the servants and asked what these things meant. And the servant said, Your brother has come, and because he's received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But the older brother was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. Did you catch it? The father ran to restore the younger, the father comes out to implore the older. So he answered, the, young, the older one said to his father, Lo, these many years I've been serving you. I've never transgressed your commandment at any time. And yet you've never, you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fatted calf for him. The father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. It was right that we should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again 
and was lost and is found. Now you know this story. You've heard it many times. But I want to close with it tonight. I want you to see it in light of what we've been talking about. Being free from emotions. From the control of unhealthy emotions. You see, the young son felt constricted. He felt restrictions. He hated the limitations that were on him. He, he just had a deep belief that things were better somewhere else. That things were better over there. You know, people, people oftentimes live that way. Oftentimes, even in churches, church people live that way. Every other pastor is a better pastor. Every other church is a better church. Every, every other thing. And there's some people that are just conference junkies. Right? They just, just got to get to that conference. They love that emotional high of a conference feeling. Well, it's great. But how many know you can't live there? You're not meant to live there. You can try to escape there, but you won't grow like God needs you to grow there. This young man said, I don't like these limitations. I can't do what I want to do when I want to do it the way I want to do it. And, and living here at home, this just isn't any fun. So he, he's, he demands his inheritance. And then after a few days, see, he's already got it planned. After a few days, he's out of there. He said, Dad, I'm gone. I don't even know if he talked to his older brother. Probably not. He just hit out. And for a while, it was wonderful. It was glorious. It was grand. Oh, as long as he had the money, he had the friends. As long as he was supplying the booze, they were all coming. As long as he was supplying the stuff, everybody wanted to, to be with him and be his friend. You see, his heart was filled with rebellion. Rebellion. He, he said, I, I, I just gotta, I gotta be my own man, do my own thing. I don't need anybody telling me what to do. And how many know that spirit is in the church too often? And the Bible said rebellion. I don't care what you call it. You can dress it up religion. You can say the Holy Ghost said, the Holy Ghost didn't led you. But rebellion by any name is rebellion. And, and you say, well, 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 how do you know? Well, God's the one who knows. You may suspect but God knows. You may not suspect, but God knows. And the young man said, I I'm going to get out of here and go do my thing. And listen, this is always true. You never judge something by the euphoria and emotional high of how it begins. Hmm. It's very seldom that anything begins poorly. It almost always begins with excitement, with people getting on board and woo. But what determines whether or not it is or is not of God is how it continues. Come on, are you hearing me right now? Know what I'm talking about. Let me know, you, you, you may think you've got the best friend, the friend you've been praying for, but they may be the best friend you've ever had for three months, but you'll know if they're your best friend if you still got them 30 years from now. I'm losing some amens up in here. Come on. Come on. And so the, the young son, I want you to see that he doesn't just represent us when we go out into sin. They also represent us in our impulsiveness, impulsivity. When we're desiring, we're, we're, we're under the tyranny of the urgent and we are sensation seeking and, and we don't premeditate it correctly enough. We let emotions cause us to make decisions and even if we dress them up with all kinds of spiritual talk, if we've not been led of the Lord, we will not persevere in it. It will not last, and it will not end well. Come on, are you hearing me? So how many want to get free? I dare somebody lift your hand and say, I don't want to be this young man. I don't want to live my life like this young man. He had no depth of relationship. He was living to satisfy his desires. This young guy had a left. Let's feel it. Attitude. But
But not only do I not want to live, come on, Christian, like the young man, I don't want to live like the old man, the older brother either. Because the older brother, he felt secure. But how many know he had no depth of relationship either? He didn't care for his younger brother. He didn't have a relationship with that boy. And he didn't have a relationship with the father. The young man didn't have a relationship with the father. All he wanted from the father was what he could get from him. The older boy, he didn't have any relationship with the father either. He had a works mentality. If you were to compare them, you would have said the younger man is ruled by his emotions and the older brother, he doesn't have emotion. But the truth is, they were both ruled by their emotions. The older brother's just austere. He's denying feelings. You say, how do you know that? He never had a party. The young brother lives to party and the old brother, he never even had a party. Well, you never, he said to the father, you never gave me even a goat. Now, look, I, I like goat. I like to eat goat. Goat is good. But if I had a choice between goat and the fatted calf, I'm going for the fatted calf. Come on. Hallelujah. But hallelujah. He said, he said, you never even gave me a goat. And the father said, son, you're always here. Everything. The young brother took his in cash and he went away with it. But everything belongs to you. But he never had a party. Why? He's denying his feelings. He's trying to live. How many have met some Christian people that are, they've been delivered from everything, including joy? I preached in a few of their churches. Hallelujah. I mean, they just... One lady came to my dad one time and said, Pastor Nix, I don't believe in smiling. He said, I know, ma'am. She literally asked, she said, did the Lord show you? He said, no, ma'am, your face. Your face showed me. I've never seen you smile since I've known you. See, You got rebellion in this young one. You got religion in this old one. And they're both controlled by feelings. Feelings. Nothing more than feelings. I live life by my feelings. And it keeps me bound. But I can get free. The father came out to both of them. You say, how do I get free from emotional bondage? In the presence of the Father. The only way to really get free is you've got to have a deep personal relationship with Father God. See, evidently, neither of these boys had spent any time sitting on the front porch in the rocking chair with Daddy. Especially that older son. He's got the most years he should, have, he should have been able to sit there and just rock with dad. And you say, what, what happens if you sit on the porch and rock beside your dad? Well, your dad shares his heart with you. And you catch not just the vision of how the farm should be ran, but you catch the heart of the father. And if the older brother had had any inkling of the heart of the father, he wouldn't have been angry that the party was going on when the young brother was home. He had ran in there, picked that young boy up, swung him around and said, I'm so glad you're back, bud. And he had been lead. come on, are you hearing me right now? He had been leading the way in the dance. The story of Luke 15, we call it the parable of the prodigal son, but it is really the parable of the father. Because it is the father who runs to meet the prodigal it is the father who goes out of the party to implore the older son. He runs to meet he who's been rebellious but has now come to himself and repented. He runs to meet the repented soul. And then he comes out to implore the religious soul and says, this is all yours. 
As we pray, I want to ask you tonight, do you want to be free? How many want to be free? Now, I know the risk is that some don't think you need it. But I'll just look you in the eye and tell you you do. We've none arrived yet. And more than we realize it, there are areas in our life of emotional bondage. There's baggage in our life. We'll talk more about that hopefully next week. There's baggage. There's areas of bondage. There's attitudes. There's guilt. There's grief. There's all kinds of things that we've been carrying. Look at me. When Jesus leads us forward and upward, the door gets narrower as we travel with Jesus. How many know Jesus said it's a narrow way that leads to life? It's a narrow way. When you first come in, it's a little broader than it will be. Hear me. As you walk with Jesus, the door narrows. Every new phase you enter into, you have to walk through a narrower door than the one you walk through to get where you are right now. Every new level, you walk through a door that narrows. Why? Because... God is making certain that if you're going to come from that level to this level, you're going to have to lay down some bags. You could carry those with you. You could keep it on that level, but you can't get through the door with all of that stuff on this level. So you got to lay something else down. You say, well, what's the point in that? Eventually, he's going to bring us to the place where it is just Jesus. Well, I don't think you heard me where it is just Jesus, where I've laid down everything. I've let go of every time. I've severed everything. And now I'm walking, I'm just walking with Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, it's Jesus and you because you're part of the family. But how many lift up your hand and say, I got to walk through that door? I got to walk through that door myself. Hallelujah. Can't nobody get me through that door except me and Jesus. So, hallelujah. So, I want to be free, don't you? Would you lift your hands with me all over this room? Hallelujah. And just say, just say, Lord, thank you for freedom tonight. Thank you that he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Come on. Will you just, will you just, ask, hallelujah. Will you just ask him to, to make you free? I dare somebody tonight. I dare somebody who will say, you'll just admit it. You won't be shy. You won't be prideful. You'll just, you'll just admit it. You, you're going to, you'll say, I'm going to stand. Lord, I, I just, I, I've been bound by my emotions. I've, I've been bound sometimes religiously, sometimes just plain old rebellion. But I, I, I just thank you, Lord, that you have done a work in me. You've already brought me a mighty long way. But I'm standing saying, Lord, I want you to, I want you to do a greater work in me. I, I, I give myself. I give myself to you, Lord. I give myself. Have your will and, and your way in my life. Come on, all over this room. That's it. Now, as, as you're standing, just with your hands lifted, just say, here I am, Jesus. Here I am and I receive right now. I receive freedom in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, I receive freedom right now. Hallelujah. Redemption, redemption is never fully known except in community. Except in community. That's why, that's why you can't get, you can't walk with God just going to conference to conference. No, that's why you can't walk with God just dropping into to that church and, and the other one. And you can't walk with where you need to walk. I'm going to make somebody mad. But you can't walk where you need to walk with God just tuning in in your living room and, and, and calling that your church service and saying I'm part of the, I'm a member of the cyber church. Uh, you, you can't do it, brother, sister. You need to rub shoulders with some men and women every single week of your life that will keep you accountable. You need to get around some people that aren't overly impressed with you. You need to have some leaders in your life that aren't impressed with you. 
They love you. They care for you. They believe in you, but they're not impressed with you. So they're going to tell you, no, no, that's a bad attitude. you got to straighten that out. No, no, I know you've walked with God for 60 years, but you still got some growing to do. Come on. We got it. We got it. We need each other. That younger son needed his brother. That older boy needed his younger brother. They needed depth of relationship. So you, you, that's, why, that's why the local church becomes so valuable. Because it's a depth of relationship. And, we, and we're, we're hanging out with people that we don't always agree with. Oh, it got quiet. We hang out with people we don't always see everything eye to eye. You say, well, I want to get around people where I always agree with them. That's going to be a mighty, mighty small group. <laughs> right? Hallelujah. In fact, it usually doesn't even work with a husband and wife. <laughs> they rescued one guy from a, he'd, 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 his ship had gone awry, and he was on a deserted island for 20 years. And they finally rescued the man. And as they, they're getting ready to take him off, and he wanted to show him around. Because 20 years, he had built some things. Built a house, built a little tree house. And he went up this hill, and he showed him his church. Here's, here's my church I built. They, they, they looked over, just over the hill, and there was another building that looked just like that building. And they said, well, well what is that building? He said, oh, that's the church I used to go to. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right? No, no. We, <laughs> we need each other. We're growing together. Has this helped anybody tonight? Hallelujah. Come on, give Jesus the praise. We're about to leave here in a moment. Caleb's going to come. But listen, I want to ask you to do something. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I know I've said some challenging things. And I've said it maybe in a way that irked you on some level. I would say I didn't intend to do it, but I've might have not you personally I'm not thinking about an individual I'm just preaching truth but if it irked you then you just need to say to the Lord Lord why, why did that do that because you should know you know Pastor Keith he's he not trying to be ugly he's just preaching truth best I know how are you willing to say tonight, Lord, I'm, I'm opening myself up. I don't want to live a, a small, restricted life and blame everybody else. If there's any smallness, it's inside me. And I'm going to ask you, Lord, to expand my heart, enlarge my heart whatever that looks like whatever that sounds like will you expand me will you enlarge me that's what Jabez prayed oh God that you would bless me bless me indeed and enlarge enlarge me enlarge me so if that's you will you just slip your hand up right now and just say, Lord, I'm asking you, I'm inviting you. I'm inviting you to enlarge my heart, to enlarge me, to expand my vision. But not only my vision, I'm asking you to expand me on the inside. Expand me and set me free from the pain of yesterday. Father, I pray right now that you would touch every person as their hands are lifted toward you and their hearts are surrendered to you. Lord, there's, there's pain in our past. There's wounds and there's hurts and there's baggage that some of us are still carrying and we don't even know we're carrying it. We don't even aware. It's become such a part of who we are that we're not yet aware that it is baggage that we need not carry 
carry forward. But Lord, we're asking you right now. We're inviting you right now. Come big in us, Lord Jesus. Come live big. Will you just pray that? Will you just say, come live big in me, Lord Jesus. Come live big in me, Lord Jesus, and expand me from the inside out and break me free from the small thinking. Break me free from small loving. Break me free from small giving. Break me free, Lord, from smallness of any kind. The smallness that comes with rebellion. The smallness that comes with religion. Break us free, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Have your way among us, Lord, and let your kingdom come and your will be done in the name of Jesus. Come on, pray. Pray right now. Seek him right now. Call upon his name right now in the name of Jesus. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Have your way among us. Free us, Father, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. Have your way. We say, have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. We thank you for it. We thank you for it, Jesus. We receive it right now. Will you just, Lord, I repent of smallness. And I receive your enlarging. I receive the enlarging of the Holy Spirit in my life. I thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for areas of lives in this room where there has been a bondage to a thing, a bondage to a feeling, a bondage to pornography that creates that feeling a bondage to alcohol or a drug that creates that feeling. A bondage, Lord, if there's been a bondage to anything, something religious that creates a feeling that we have relied on more than simply relying on you. A bondage to a food that creates a feeling, a bondage to any act that has become for us that which we need in order to live. God, I pray there be a delivering of it and a delivering from it right now in the name of Jesus. Come on. If, you, if there's anything in your life, anything at all, that you're, you know you need the help of God to be free from it. It may even be something that's not negative or evil in and of itself, but you have an, you have an inordinate reliance upon it that has caused it to be bad for you. Will you just slip your hand up right now and just say, Lord, I'm asking you for deliverance in the name of Jesus, for freedom from it in the name of Jesus Christ come on all over this room all over this room maybe something you're not even aware of but if you think there could be anything just say here I am Lord I just want to be fully free I just want to be fully free Father I thank you for every surrendered heart and every surrendered life you said if we submit ourselves to God then we can resist the enemy and the enemy must flee away so we take authority right now in the name of Jesus and we command the power of the enemy that has had any access to our life at all. Satan the Lord rebuke you. Go in Jesus mighty name and loose the people of God who are submitting to him. Right now come on just praise God. Just praise God because shackles are breaking. Strongholds coming down right now in Jesus name. In Jesus name. Lord I give you the praise for it. Hallelujah, Father. I get, come on. Can we give God a, a shout of praise if you believe it's happening? Praise Him right now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. Glory to God. Now, turn around and tell somebody, I'm going to leave here freer than when I came in. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Go ahead, testify. You overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. So testify to somebody else and say, He whom the Son makes free is free indeed. He's doing a work in me and making me free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as Caleb comes to close us out tonight, 
If you've ever been rebellious, will you raise your right hand? Thank God we're, we're an honest bunch. Hallelujah. If you've ever been religious, will you raise your left hand? If you believe Jesus is setting you free from both those, wave and give him. Hallelujah. There's nothing uglier than religious rebellion. God's making us free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, wasn't that good tonight? Hallelujah. Man, I just believe that this is illustrates just what pastor was saying that we need the body for messages like this right on a wednesday night we can come in and, and experience freedom on a new level and 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 receive freedom at layer by layer we we get freer and freer every week you keep coming and hearing the word wash over you and just uh, release release something unlock some things in your life and allow freedom to flow i just want to remind us we're going to get ready to give uh, and worship god in our giving of our tithe and our offering here in a moment but i just want to remind us of a few announcements uh, of things coming up of course this saturday men at 8 a.m we have our men's breakfast so make sure to sign up for that uh, there should be a sign up sheet in the foyer or you can do it online as well uh, and get your name on the list so we have enough food for everybody ladies at the end of the month uh, saturday may 27th you have your heart to hearth gathering uh, so make sure you get registered for that and then also the Lift Christian Academy open house on Thursday, June 1st, uh, from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, so you can come swing by and, and, and uh, learn what it's going to be about and, and see. I think there's going to be a, a, a classroom staged, uh, so you can see that. So, so make sure to, to put that on your calendar uh, if you have little ones and are interested in that. And then the Men's Forge Conference, Friday, June uh, 9th and Saturday, June 10th. Get registered online. Those are always powerful, powerful weekends. We're going to have guests in. Uh, pastor's going to be sharing. It's just a phenomenal time for men to come together uh, and worship the Lord and, and, and fellowship and, and just receive all that he has for us. Uh, so make sure you get registered online. I'm going to read this quick verse, uh, and then we'll pray over our, our giving tonight uh, and have the ushers uh, bring the buckets forward as we, as we leave. Uh, you'll, you'll be free to give. Uh, but I just want to read 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9, verse 10. And proclaim this over our giving. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Anyone want increase in this place? Come on. And, and it's just a matter of us participating and being obedient in the place of giving and saying we're faithfully where he supplied the seed, we're faithful to sow. Amen. So, Father, I just pray for every one of us father that are that have been given a seed given a measure to to sow into your kingdom father and i just pray lord that you would multiply it father for your purpose lord that you would raise up people father of generosity you already have in this house lord but you would just continue to increase the spirit of generosity father so that we can see the vision that you've you've placed on this house that you've given pastors father we can see it come to pass lord by by the generosity of those who are willing to to sow father into your kingdom into the fertile ground that you've established here at the lift father so that we can facilitate the vision that you've birthed in this place i just pray your blessing over your your people father i pray the grace of the lord jesus the love of the father and the communion of the holy spirit with your people now and always as they go tonight in jesus name we pray amen amen you can feel free to come give on your way out and shake some hands love each other we love you and we'll see you sunday <laughs>